How you doing? This is James DeBow on Discovering on Big Condo Radio. We're here to discover new things and we've got a special guest in the building, Raz Congo. How you doing, Raz? Respect, James. I'm well. That's good anyway, you know. Jobless. Great to have you there anyway, you know. It's been, um, I've been awaiting, you know. So anyway, you deal with a lot of um, mental health. Mm -hmm. You deal with, you're a musician. I've mm -hmm. heard some of your music. It's great. Mm -hmm. You're also a world traveler like myself, yes. you know. And um, also you have a great knowledge on African history. But we're going to touch first on the mental health. Yes. If you want to elaborate on that. Uh, well, first and foremost, <clears throat> I'd just like to say it's a pleasure to be here, James. Thanks for the invite. Also, Chase, thank you very much for providing the platform. I appreciate it. It's very nice to be here. And um, yeah, so basically, um, we all grew up. Uh, Patrick here is my longtime friend. We all grew up. We know your family and everything. We grew yeah. up in Liverpool. So when you look at our health, we were all very health conscious from a very early age because good natural food was cooked in our homes along with the information, the culture, the roots of who we are, our identity. So naturally, when I, I left Liverpool at a certain age, I went down to London when I was about 18, 19, started working with young people to begin with. So I was on an agency, right? Yeah. I was getting good money, the work was coming in, but then all of a sudden the work dried up a little bit. And every time I called the agency, they said, we've got a mental health facility. And I was like, no, no, because of stigma, James. Okay. I, I had stigma of mental health at one time, you know? So they kept on saying, There's a, you, you should go to this mental health. They've got loads of mental health, but no children places, right? So I was like, oh, no, no, because I, I was thinking, you know, images of Jack Nicholson in The Shine and chopping down jaws. So after a while, two, three weeks, there was just like small hours, and I was like, it was a matter of survival now. So then I said, okay, I picked up the phone, <clears throat> got in touch, and they gave me the... Um, address i started working they liked me so much they gave me three three months straight away and they would review it and i was working with some lovely people in those days right a lot of the care homes it was just coming in from like the care in the community act that was about 1989 to 1991 so like in the old times a lot of these big hospitals were all on the corners of uh, cities they were like communities within themselves some of them look like Frankenstein's castle or Count Dracula's castle. All walled, walls around them, um, basically filled in with lots of people who were suffering. Yeah, And this model of Victorian mental health care, if you could call it mental health care, was still prevalent in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And we have to remember, you know, in those days, people were put into hospital because... They were victims of racism and they were a bit angry and frustrated and they were venting their frustration in their cultural compet competent manner. Or women who had children out of wedlock, young women, especially if they had a child to a black man, that was a problem. So I got into the health. I suddenly realized I was quite good at this because the biggest thing for me was, I'm not a trained doctor, I'm, I was just at the time, I was just a mental health worker. But... I had a very good way of engaging with people. So I was able to talk to people. People felt empowered to talk to me. We were able to de-escalate any problems and we were able to like, you know, construct a good vibration, a good atmosphere that, that lasted. And then I started, uh, I was offered to do training in dual diagnosis, which is drugs and alcohol as well. Um, so I took the training, got a diploma in it. So that gave me more of a vantage point, more of a, what's the word I'm looking for now, more of a value within the oh, National yeah. Health Service. So I started working as a dual diagnosis worker, and that's mainly, you know, working with people who've got mental health problems. They may be on a substance, they may be drinking a lot of alcohol, they may be on a substance and alcohol as well. So it's just about really working with them to reduce the harm to themselves, looking at the lifestyle, um, helping them to comply with medical regime, and also, you know, employment, looking at your, um, you know, your aspirations, what you want to be, trying to open up the mind so that you can think about themselves and take some responsibility, referrals to rehab placements, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And then obviously, you know, the mental health is interesting because <clears throat> in the West, they tend to separate health. They separate mental health from physical health, from spiritual health. Yeah. And India, where, where we come from, yeah. in the motherland, right? It, health is health. You know, the, the component for health is heal, T-H. Wellness, they say wellness. Well, we are 70% water, so where you put the water, the water's in the well. 
Absolutely. So if we think good about ourselves, we think good about our families, our friends, even our peers and society, that can have a tremendous effect on our well-being. It can promote a positive well-being. If for whatever reason, and let's, I'm, we're not being judgmental here because many people have suffered experiences. You know, life is all about experiences oh. and how you cope with them. Some people have been through horrendous journeys. Some of those people have responded because what will make one man can break another man. But it's all about what gave these people the inspiration to conquer the adversities they faced. It's got to be a positive mindset mm. or they've been fortunate to meet people and have people in their life who were able to give them some of that positive mindset, you know? Well, it was interesting you mentioned that, Raz. I had two guests on yesterday, mm -hmm. um, Misha Estridge mm -hmm. and also uh, Alicia Fadiak. And yes. One of them deals with the Shakti, uh, Shakti Reiki. Yes, Reiki, yeah. Reiki, yes. Yes, yeah, so, and we were talking yesterday and I was mentioning about, like, it's like if you feel sick or if you think sick mm -hmm. and, like, it's like the negative... You know, I'm just talking about taking the negative yes. and make it positive. Yes, yes. Because if you're thinking like negative all the time, then Absolutely. you're drawing in that energy Absolutely. like you were saying before. I, I totally agree. You know? And the thing is, James, <clears throat> the mind is so positive, right? So powerful that I actually, I wouldn't even say believe. I know because energy can't die. I'm not a scientist or anything like but i know energy cannot die yeah. and i know i existed before i was born into this physical body and i know i'm gonna exist and live after this physical body definitely relate to you right. on a spiritual level definitely well, this, totally this is reality brother. reality yeah. okay so basically right when you bear that in mind right health is all encompassing right? it's how we deal with each other we have to deal with each other in a healthy manner we have to have manners we have to have respect we don't want to give things to people that is going to damage them. We only want to give things to people that is going to uplift them That's right. and raise them up to our consciousness, you know? So, first of all, we have to get things right in the community of self. And once we're, you know, we're always going to learn. We're, you know, we're no, no one's ever perfect. But once we get things right in the community of self, we can impact that on our local community, on our wider community. So... Like one of the biggest things that I've experienced or I've had the pleasure, right, of being involved with was about 20 years ago, I was working in Camden and Islington and I left. I used to work in a day centre. It was a bit too much after a while because um, I needed a new challenge. I was there for six years, right? So <clears throat> I looked in the Voice, <clears throat> excuse me, I looked in the Voice newspaper and there was a job going in a cultural specific outreach team, assertive mm. outreach team for young people, black people between 16 to 25 who had mental health issues. Mm. And we gravitated towards that. We got the job. And um, it was one of the best things in, in my life in terms of like equipping me, working with people and having my understanding and my experience, being able to make a powerful impact because we're talking about mental health. We're talking yeah. about health, we're coming back to mental health. We live in a racist society where basically, right, if any of us had a little problem or we got stressed, straight away they may say that's no disrespect joe but they may say to us oh he's psycho he's schizophrenic oh I'm, i believe it's schizophrenic oh we'll put him on this amount of medication and we end up on an unfair diagnosis we end up on a trailer load of medication and they may see joe here our lovely young assistant here they may see joe and he's manifesting and the same issues and they may say, oh, we just need some talking therapy. I'll give him a little something for his mood so he can uplift him. So yeah. we're dealing in an unfair society. And unfortunately, these things, you know, they, they creep over and spill over to all aspects. So the time I had with this cultural specific service, it was called Antenna Outreach, was one of the best things I've ever done because I was able not just to champion on people's behalf, we were able to champion the system more because... We were created to champion the system. Yeah. This, this whole uh, outreach team was created because parents, right, and carers and family members and friends in the community of Tottenham, North London, were basically saying, we don't trust mental health services. It's not that we're not engaging with mental health services. Mental health services aren't engaging with us. So we mm. were able to try to fill the gap and i think we did a very good job at doing that well that's interesting that because even from sometimes the ancient world is not too much different than the, the mm -hmm. new world and mm -hmm. it's only people who've changed it but if you look at what 
the ancient people will say we just need um, food, mm -hmm. clothing, mm -hmm. security, yes. safety, and shelter. Absolutely. And now someone can think, well, how do we deal with this on a modern day basis? And we've got to we'll control your economics, Excellent. control your culture, and also control your society. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It. James, just before we move on, there was a gentleman, right, in the 50s, 40s or 50s called Maslow, a psychologist. Yeah. And he did exactly the same thing that you said. He called it, check this out, he called it the pyramid mm. of needs, okay? And basically it was like shelter, food, relationships, basic things in life. If we've got that right, you know, because a man could have like, it's not money that's going to save us. Money can help us. Money's a commodity, but yeah. we have to have that well-being and that balance in control. our life. We have to control the economics. Absolutely. That's, definitely. Yeah. So he's calling it the pyramid of needs. I don't think that is accidental. Like I've listened to, we, you know, me and Patrick talk all the time through the years. I've listened, me and you have talked. I've yeah. looked at the podcast. We've had our identity, our resources, our everything stolen from us. Exactly. We're operating on a smidgen of of self-knowledge and we're trying our best to recuperate that you know what i mean Be because basically um a lot of these ideals that have been repackaged are the ones that were taken from us or in many ways we actually gave this knowledge to the world we weren't looking to promote or ego it was not nothing about that it was about promoting well-being and us being at one with nature yeah, definitely. I definitely relate to nature mm -hmm. there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I visited a lot of tribes around the world mm -hmm. and stuff. And like, I always look for what's similar than what's mm -hmm. different. Absolutely. Because when we look for what's different, everyone can, that's when you automatically can see a divide. Mm -hmm. What I see in the ancient world, what they all seem to say mm -hmm. is, is it, they see it's nature mm -hmm. as in like, not the weird God, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. a, and you understand it's like this duality. Yes. And we are the same. We have the ability to be good or bad. It's yes, in us. Absolutely. Our demons can be pushed. Yeah. But at the end of the day, which side do you want to lean more to? The positive I totally or agree. the negative? I totally agree. And, yeah. you know, just saying, right, um, we're dealing with spirituality. But at the same time, we don't want to get this confused. Yeah. We have religious friends. Yeah. We have religious ideas. We have all, And we wouldn't disrespect anybody. You know, we have to realize even in Christianity, you have like over 120 versions of the Bible, umpteen denominations. Yeah. You know, so in Islam, we respect Islam, we respect everything. But at the same time, we respect ourselves too. Yeah. And we have to share because fair exchange is no robbery. So I have friends who are Muslim, friends who are Christian, and we enjoy each other's company and we're able to talk. And we're able to, you know, respect each other and I, move forward. You know what, like, um, obviously, like you say, you know, I give the respect to anyone's beliefs mm -hmm. and that. But I felt like with religion, it can take you like 10,000 miles. But I felt like with spirituality, yeah. it, it's it's just unlimited in well, infinity. Well, there, there lies the, the issue. Reli yeah. Religion has been used as a weapon against us. Yeah. And we can see that historically. We probably may, may not be able to cover that in this podcast because we're on the limited time of course but re religion is being used as a weapon against us and the thing is a lot of these um ideals have actually come from mother africa and Definitely. they've been seen as elements of nature elements of well-being elements of prosperity and they've been given physical um historical um timelines and even like um, European ideals and all these type of things and that's been pushed back on us in Africa I live in Africa I live in Rwanda yeah. I lived in Ethiopia and motherland Ethio like, very strong Ethiopia is probably one of the best models to talk about in terms of religion because as we know it's a very strong point for Christianity Christianity has, it's been evidence that Christianity was born there before European before the Council of the Ni Nicaea, 325 AD. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's always had a, a love for the Christianity ideals, but also Islam, right? So they live, Islam and Christianity live side by side. Um, people intermarry. There's not a problem. The kids are, you know, fine with everything. And even when the Prophet Muhammad was establishing Islam and there was issues in that part of the world, he went to Ethiopia, he told people, go to Ethiopia, you know, there, there's a safe haven for you there. The mm -hmm. people went to Ethiopia, they were protected. Uh, Bilal was the first Iman, he was an Ethiopian. Rahman. Yeah. yeah. 
black man Ethiopian. So also Muhammad, um, it was his grandmother. Absolutely, supposed to be from Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absol- Ab- Abyssinia, do you want to call it? Whatever you want to call A- it. Absolutely, yeah. James. Yeah. I mean, so like we're not on no, um, we're not looking at no supremacy. What we're looking for is equity, equality, justice. Facts. And the only way we're gonna get that, maybe not with. I'm not saying get an M. <laughs> get an M16 or an AK-49. Mm. I'm saying we need to be armed with knowledge, knowledge of self, knowledge of our own history in our own context, you know? Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Also, you're the musician as well. I've listened to some of your music. Yeah. Like, how old was you young when you got into your music? I was, I was young when I was, when I was a child. When I was a little boy, I used to stick on a hat and imitate Uroy, Prince Jasbo and I, Roy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, because... Like we always grew up around music, you know, growing up. It, music has always been important to us. Even, you know, the original music is the art beat, that, the beat in your chest. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we're surrounded. We've got the art beat. We've got the eardrums. Real bum, music. Bum, 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 bum. So we love the music. And the music was, uh, especially in our time growing up, um, for example, we loved soul music. We loved the funk. We loved jazz. We loved reggae. Maybe we more identified with reggae because of the type of tenants it was promoting at the time, especially roots music. So a lot of the things that I find myself pursuing in my life right now, a lot of a lot of it came because of the artist and the music and the producers and the distributors of this great artistry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It really influenced me. Also as well, you know, there's something that I'm really related to from when I first came on the Big mm-hmm. Condo Radio. Yes. And it's obviously being a world traveler. Yes. And it's not just like you're the world traveler, just like myself. Mm-hmm. I'm really related to you moving around this planet spiritually. Yes. Yeah. Well, Big Condo, got a big up, Big Condo. Yeah? Yeah. Big Condo is a, a beautiful innovation here. It's nice to really, for me, it's a pleasure for me to be a part of it right now. You watched it all, isn't um, it? But you know, I got this mm-hmm. opportunity because you asked me about the music, right? So yeah. I got this opportunity where basically, you know, we've done a lot of traveling and whatnot, right? So um, I'd always gone to America, right? from a, a young guy but i was all, always fixed on the east coast i didn't really know anybody on the west coast and this was when the beef between the east coast and the west coast oh, was yeah. going on you know what i mean Whoa. so i was more like new york harlem brooklyn bronx boston yeah. philadelphia i you do know. prefer the east coast music uh, just you know but i like both but i like i like both bro uh, but east coast is but, for me but what happened with me i was like oh, i want to go to california but i didn't know anybody so one time mm. i just basically said okay just go and you know you're not gonna you have to go be there to know people to meet people and i went and lo and behold man i met some real good people man i like california real good people who mm. Because New York can be a little ratty sometimes, you know. I remember like being in the subway and I was asking a, a woman a question and she's like, saying, look at the goddamn map. So there's this New York, people are very impatient in New York. Well, 12 to 15 million people, everybody's got no time for that, you know. Whereas in, I found, I found Los Angeles and California to be very, very calm, very focused on the artistry, mm. paintings, you know what I mean? Music, singing, poetry. I felt like a beatnik, far out, man. I was like in my habitat. So I was there a couple of days. I was in a, a hotel a couple of days. And I was looking for a Trinidadian bredgen of mine, one Rasta man who used to live in New York called Ja Faith. And it was on Fairfax Avenue, Fairfax Boulevard. He had a shop with another brother that was selling African artifacts and whatnot, right? And this was in a place called Little Ethiopia. Because in LA, you've got all these little areas, and it could be little Armenia, little Italy, little China, right? This is, so it's predominantly Ethiopian people and Eritrean people living there what? with all the restaurants, yeah. coffee shops, blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking for this brother, and it was 2020, right? That was the address, 2020. But it was West Fairfax, right? I didn't see the W. I didn't even know what the W meant. So I went to a different end of the street. And, you know, in America, you know, some of them streets is like they'll go on forever if you're not careful, you know. <laughs> so I went to the top end, which was closer to Santa Monica Boulevard. And it was some white dudes, you know, like safer looking guys, you know what I mean? And I'm like talking to them. I'm looking for this place. And they said, yeah, it's the, it's the other end you need to go, blah, blah. And we just hit it off. And the, I heard some reggae music playing and smelled some nice aromatic flavors coming from there you know mm. so i said okay and he goes have you got a minute i said yeah man so i ended up staying there 
chilling out with the brother and spit a few things on because he had this little studio not too dissimilar to this and he said he wanted to work with me and everything was cool and he said where are you staying i said i'm staying black he goes come and stay by me and i was getting a little bit worried because i'm not really you know I've, i wasn't too old fair and i know about hollywood this was west hollywood by the way and i'm thinking i hope this guy doesn't start stroking my leg or trying to you know what I mean? yeah because <laughs> because he was he was coming divine he was coming to me divine and usually you know sometimes i'm thinking people only want something people want no such thing as a free lunch anyway everything was fine he had his his his, his girlfriend and he gave me his flat he gave me his flat and i'm in his flat for like three four weeks and i'm just living there nice making my food every, everything's cool then I, he, he was involved with um a dub club and that was um in a place called the echo plex so that used to play every wednesday and the saturday and a lot of the time like twice twice a month they'd have big artists from jamaica come over and local artists so i was in my element there getting getting paid a little something doing doing like voiceovers or what's that one you call what's that one you call no um um not dub plates um shout outs and things like that you know yeah and doing well, like specials and things like that so everything was running well that's well you know what um because we got like about 10 something left um so yeah we want to move into because you've been a lot of places yeah yeah, yeah. tell me yeah, like, yeah. south america you've been yeah, in, yeah. isn't it you've yeah. been into australia these places just, and... just coming to that right so i'm gonna be very quick yeah. now because i'm aware of the time i'm mm. aware of the time that's what they say in psychology you know <laughs> i'm aware of the time you've yeah. got like three minutes left but anyway when i was there i met another guy who his brother's a big hollywood um producer right so i met this other guy his name the guy's uh, sam spiegel and he had his own label and everything right so i cut a few tunes for him he liked them and um he was working with this guy from south america from brazil called zagon ah. so he was south america he was north america they called themselves nasa right and uh, a tour happened they did an album i was on the album and they did a tour and they invited me on the tour so i ended up doing i think 12 12 um sessions dates in in north america in, in america and canada and um, south america as well but yeah. i'd already visited a lot of uh, well definitely brazil and places like that but they, these guys brought me into like belize they brought me into like mexico um also colombia and all these other places nice. yeah chile you know what i mean mm. so i didn't have a, a, enough time to really get into the indigenous levels because we were just there doing a tour and like you could be there for like two days do two shows three days oh you've got it i understand yeah, yeah yeah but but that led on because that that led on to my cause I, I was going like the first time i went anywhere it was to jamaica okay right? yeah I, I was about 18 um knew one or two people there but i stayed there for three like 10 weeks i was there for and i just like felt in my environment you know could have got a little bit scary at some times when you're like in certain garrisons and that but I was a little bit protected, you know? Um, so I d toured the Caribbean and everything. The first time I ever went to Africa was 1990, and that was to Egypt. Egypt. And I don't know, I'd been reading a few books on Egypt. I mean, it was one was by a, a chap called Gerald Massey. He was actually, oh, yeah. you know yeah, about Gerald yeah, Massey? Definitely. This guy was like from over 100 and f 120 years ago, wrote many interesting books. Um, he's the one who said about Stonehenge was built by a yes, black man called yeah. Maury absolutely oh, yeah. this is where the moors come from yeah. and this is why we call that land in Yorkshire the Yorkshire moors yeah. you have more riches or more riches as That's I like it. to say mm. right so it's all it's, we've had a hidden we've had we've got to unveil our own history you know because like Patrick was saying earlier if, in order to tell the lie you have to be aware of the truth oh, so you can hide the lie and that's what we've been the victims of most definitely so I, i'm walking around with uh you know my my so-called birth name is marvin nichols but that's not my name you know understand what i'm well, saying well i was happy yeah um, because i was mentioning your name to some people who, who knew mm. you and see people going who's that and then obviously yeah, yeah. when they realized they said well, why is it i said you know what <laughs> i'm happy he's done that because yeah, I, I can like relate to you 100 yeah, percent. i mean yeah. my last name's a nigerian yes name, sir. which um fortunate to have it's a proud name as well you know at the end of the day it's a meaning yes you have meaning to the name it means something and if you're walking around with for example if you go to a supermarket yeah and you want to buy broccoli you can't find it in a bag marked carrots 
Do you understand? It's like, uh, <laughs> that's why everyone who comes on the show, you know, the highlight of the show is always the importance of African mm-hmm. history mm-hmm. from a positive level. Mm. We get told the stereotype, the negativity, yes. Yes. We, on, we only were slaves. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's, you know how it is, isn't it? Well, this is why the traveling for me was so important. And I've traveled a lot of places. Oh, um, yeah. But, and I'm not, like, I'm very interested in, in Africa as a whole, but I was fortunate enough to go to Australia a couple of times, New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Um, India. When I was in India, People were coming to me speaking in Punjabi. You know, understand? They were like talking. I was like, what? Are they? And they just took me as a as a Punjabi man. You got Dravidians and everyone. Yeah, you must yeah. have seen different kinds of people yeah, in some India. Some dark people. Listen, some people in India, right? Who are close to the border of China, and they look like Chinese. No, and East. you have people that look. Yeah, you have people that will look like. But Ethiopia, they'll not look like they, they are Ethiopians. You know what I mean? Kushites went yeah, in there. Yeah, it? yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. India is, is India is only. It's actually called Barhat. It's only the, uh, the uh, British called the India because they were saying all life is indigenous to this land. Well, Herodotus which wasn't the case. When he was mentioning uh, Herodotus, mm-hmm. he was mentioning about Africa having two civilizations, mm-hmm. and he was explaining the tighter haired one yes. in Africa yes. and the ones with the looser hair yes, yes. in India. Absolutely, Dravidians, yes. if you want to call them. Yeah, different names. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Because the there's certain empires, right? That that you know our understanding of geography is very much you know clouded. That's why the, the, I mean, Europe isn't a continent. Europe's a part of Asia. If anything, it's your Asia, yeah. right? And they shrink Africa and make Africa look smaller than what it is. So there's an agenda going on, Definitely. as we know, right? So um, basically, brother, I was like very interested in, in, in Africa. I've you know, spent time in, in South Africa. I lived there. Uh, I've traveled around. But the most important, I would say, I'd be, because time is limited, I lived in Ethiopia for three years. Ethiopia's got like about 80, 83 different tribes, although the main ones are wow. the Oromo, uh, Amhara, and you have uh, other little ones. You have small ones like Gujri, you know mm. what I mean, Hama. The Hama people look like Sudanese. In actual fact, it was a part of Sudan, and I think Emperor Menelik took some of that land f- to expand Ethiopia. So it's a big story, but you can see the different cultures. Ethiopia is one land, very diverse land you know we're dealing with top topography mountains valleys green grasses lakes and it's also the same with the people and the wildlife and you know what i mean the the birds and everything and you have some tribes down in in the south in a place called uh Arbaminch yeah. and beyond these places um and they they have the um you know the things in the lips the plates in the lips yeah um, all the, the the decorations, oh, tribal markings, yeah. and for example, if somebody is going to get married, right? It's like the, the 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 woman will have many suitors, so there might be ten young guys who are interested in the hand, yeah. And in order to get that hand, right, it's about you got to jump maybe whoever jumps the most cows. So there might be like you know like evil can evil. Yeah, there might be like twelve, fourteen cows lined up, and you jump. And the one that that's one one little uh, bow like string in your bow, and then they have these like stick fights, which to other people who don't know it, they might think that's a bit brutal. <laughs> but you know, there's brutal things going on in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Serious stick fights on the, the that's another thing that proves like Olympics. You know? Yeah. Right. Um, and also like wrestling and things like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was very interesting. But you know, like there's always the the patriarch of the people is very important you know the original yeah. medicine man the the, the, the the they'll know everything about medicine a lot of we're under attack because a lot of these these uh older people in africa are becoming less and less because people are forced to leave from the urban i'm um, sorry from the um rural regions to go to the urban places for survival so it's it's we need to document these knowledges and we need to keep them readily available see you know this is I mean? why i always try to search for the roots of cultures uh-huh. all the time yeah and some places i've been to even in west africa mm. where they've said oh just concentrate on the religion like mm. the new modern religions yes it's like when i was there was a man selling masks when i was staying in gambia uh-huh. and I, I said i don't want that mask i want yeah. the i want the dogon yes the and dogon then, and then, right. he, then he looked at me james how do you know yeah, about yeah. the dogon yeah you know like yeah, yeah. and and it just brings you closer to these it people it brings you closer you know like it's it's also interesting as well how you know they 
anthropologists or historians or whatever may use the word primitive and yeah. we may think oh primitive means basic or whatever but really it just means first the original okay oral history is more reliable you know what i mean so basically right you are the original people and that means that everything you you have was the original right so in terms of like what makes us civilized you know what i mean what makes us civilized unity community farming distribution of food everybody must be fed yeah all, all these type of things that's what makes us want to be civilized you know yeah, yeah. so it's very important you know well, I'll tell you what, though, I've learned a lot off you, though, so, uh -huh. and, like, also, it's amazing. I remember you tell me all around Africa you've been yeah, and stuff, yeah. like, yeah. which was your favourite place in Africa? I've been, I've been fortunate, you know, I've really been fortunate, and I don't really think I have a favourite place as such. I mean, at, at the moment, right, I'm in Rwanda. Rwanda's got a lot of benefits going for it, a lot of pros. I mean, there's pros and cons to every society. Rwanda's a small country in terms of Africa. It's got about 12, 13 million people living there. It's mm. landlocked between like Tanzania, the Congo, Burundi, and Uganda and Kenya, right? But it's got some good leadership. You know, Paul Kagame is the is the president. Uh, the government's been quite good. People will say bad things about him, but he's not dealing with democracy. Whatever democracy is supposed to be, you understand, bro? Yeah. So he's dealing with like, I mean, the country dra got itself in. You know about the Houthi and the. The yeah. Tutsis, oh, the, the, the Hutu, and the, the Hutu and the Tutsis. Yeah, were, yeah, yeah. Basically, that there was a major breakdown, right? We have to take our responsibility. A lot of it was manipulated by the Belgian rule, but we have to take our responsibility. It was us chopping up each other and killing each other. So at the end of the day, we can talk about colonialism, imperialism, which basically is terrorism. And we've got to start thinking for ourselves, you know. We have to be able to read between the lines because we're not going to be told the truth from these uh, big, powerful media outlets. Oh, definitely you know I mean? not. There's a lot of Bantus, if you noticed, all over Africa. Yes. You, and I'm not mentioning that to you because you've been yes. in a lot of places. Yes, I've seen yes. in Kenya, Madagascar. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, also with Rwanda, you must yes. have Bantu people there. They have, they, they're called the Batwa. Batwa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Different the, dialect, but it's still Bantu, isn't it? You yeah. Know? yeah. The ba yeah. Basically, brother... For me, I think these are the original people. I'm, I'm with right? that too, you know. I think they're the original people. I think if you look at, like, you know, you look at the bones, uh, Professor Leaky, Robbie Leaky, and his yeah. people uh, found, was supposed to have discovered the bones, and they called her Lucy. Well, yeah. they're finding a lot of these bones all over Africa, all over the world, but predominantly in Africa as the oldest bones. Interestingly enough, they all mm. seem to be female. They don't find it. I don't know if... I don't know if we, we were reproducing or someone's tampered with her. I don't know, but they all seem to be women. But like Patrick was saying, there's a lot of still buried antiquities all over. Oh, not just yeah. not just our bones, our, our schools, our libraries. And we've had been under attack where we've had our libraries and universities burnt down yeah. and everything, you know, and that knowledge has been stolen and it's probably under... Westminster Abbey and under the Vatican and all these places because you look at the world you see this needle this this Egyptian the obelisk oh yeah. yeah and they've taken them out of Egypt put them in London they're in Paris they're in Washington well why is that they've stole our knowledge and stole that well tried to step yeah, yeah. watered it down basically you absolutely know, that's it absolutely brother you but know. you know what though Raz though though it's been a great interview mm -hmm. today and um, it's like you say we, we're discovering new things and yes. I, I'm discovering a lot of new things what yes. you're talking about too you know yeah, yeah. we're coming to the end of the show yes uh, if you want to drop well I'd just like to say no. I'd just like to say right um, I really respect what you're all doing Patrick's my long time brethren oh, yeah. as you know um, respect Everything you're doing, James, Chase, uh, everything. Yeah. But I don't even, like you say, we don't say black history. We just say, this is our story. You know, this is our story. Now, this yeah. story belongs to all humanity. Yeah. Okay, so we're not, so basically, right, we just want to be able to educate. Not ju It's very important to educate the younger people because they're the men and women of tomorrow. Yeah. But even our peers who we may be rubbing shoulders with at work or wherever, we need to, you know, the only way we're going to remove the ignorance or the arrogance is to really get that information out to them very timely as well a few little crumbs here and there with the first you know people I mean? coming out of africa i'm just going to go quick mm. the first yeah. people coming out of africa so the first cultures the mm -hmm. first spirituality the first yeah. uh, the first of a lot of things yeah yeah now obviously when people have gone different parts of the world mm -hmm. they're going to develop their own yes. ways especially when these, if you believe the ice age yeah i'm like 
with you know some people believe there's a flood some people yeah, believe yeah. there's an ice age Absolutely. doesn't really matter to me yeah, yeah. but because life began in africa yeah. and i think everybody no matter where you are in the world you have mm. to embrace african Absolutely. culture yeah and before that, go into the spirit world. Well, you're faced with African culture everywhere, even if yeah. it's even if it's um, redefined. Not that you can redefine it, but yeah. you know, repackaged and sold as something else. We know it's originally African, and we give thanks. But what we need to do is try our best, right, to let the young people, right, especially the everyone, yeah. but especially the young people, to have a little bit more information about themselves and more pride, more you know more. Like, you know, it's not just about slavery as such. Slavery is important and it's important to document yeah. everything about slavery, right? Definitely. But it's we need to go further as well. Yeah. And we need to celebrate our development and our enlightenment. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, f you know what, Raz, anyway, thank you very much thank for coming you, anyway. And we'll discover the new things. Thank and, you, brother. You know, on the Big Condo Radio. Yes. And yeah. you know what? Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Thank up. you, Chase. Me now watch no face, but me know me place. Ah. Uh, peace.